everyone. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. We've got a good division rivalry coming up here in the AFC, and these two teams have met once already, so they are more than familiar with one another's tendencies, and maybe more importantly, their weaknesses. It's the Broncos going up against the Chargers. All right, we appreciate it, Larry. It's our exclusive coverage of the National Football League on EA Sports. Nothing like the fanfare of introductions to an NFL game, and that was in evidence a moment ago. Fireworks, pyrotechnics, you name it. This crowd is ready as their guys get set to match up between the Denver Broncos and the Los Angeles Chargers. Both of these teams about to reach the halfway point of this NFL season, and we're underway on EA Sports. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And the decision to bring it out, a good one, as he's up a yard or two shy of the 30. So here are the Broncos now for their opening drive. And leading them, Charles, their quarterback, their field general. Tanked up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? So they jumped on the left side of that line. And you know when you're at the end spot, you are like in the starting blocks, waiting for the pistol to fire and go. And he jumped a little bit too early. some open field here and he goes out of bounds across the 40 yard line that one going for a gain of 11 and a Bronco first down partner as a quarterback sometimes you just got to know when the clock has gone off in your head it's time to go tuck it and get all you can and he'll take this one across the 45 up to about the 46 yard line give him three on first down it'll set up a second and seven the lifeblood of the offense. They established the tone. Mean, nasty, physical. They can't wait to get after people. That allows the rest of the offense to feel confident. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. Gonna throw right side here, complete. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. That one going for a gain of 11 and a Bronco first down. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. And the big meet on the D-line, we'll see how they do today. And I'd hate to be an offensive lineman having to deal with these guys. They come in hungry, mean, and confident. They think that no one can block them. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. to throw here on second and 10. He'll rifle this one. Got a man, it's caught inside the 10. And that one results in 35 yards. And I guess, Charles, sometimes when you have a receiver well over six foot, you do that. Just put it up there, let him grab it, and he did. And it certainly appears like a 50-50 ball, right? We always talk about that one. And that is caught. Touchdown, Denver. 
these guys have won three straight ball games and another good start to this one out to the 6-0 lead. And I've talked with so many different coaches, as have you, along the way, and they always talk about winning streaks and the mood of a team and how much easier it is to actually prepare during that time. Guys are sharp. Guys are focused. Everyone's feeling good, and we're seeing it early in this one. Now the extra point try forthcoming. And he's got it. 7 nothing Broncos. the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And from back there, a wise move. He'll just sit on this one, and it'll come out to the 25. So here's the Charger offense making their way out. At a glance at the man under center at 6'5", he always demands attention. second down and the buffet boys the o-line hopefully they're ready today listen you got to feed them first but if you do you usually get a great product out on the field and when they play well the quarterback can't wait to feed them afterwards see if they stay on the ground for second down Hurry up, here we go. Ah. now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw <laughs> And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. A 10-yard pickup, and it's enough for a Charger first down. And now here's a carry heading left. And he will be hit with a lot of force and spun down at the 36. They'll wind up losing three yards here. And that'll make this a second and 13. Well, the person carrying the ball is always the easy target when things aren't going so well. But I think it's a combination with the Chargers. They've got to get the offensive line going in order to improve those numbers from last year. They weren't very good running it, partner. No, they were bottom of the AFC, second to last in the entire NFL. Looks like they're establishing a pretty good pattern here because they've been very heavy in the running game on the last four plays. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. So far, four plays in this drive, all four on the ground. Over the middle, complete. It's Wolf. 14 yards is the pick up there and a Charger first down. A lot of tight ends just use their size and their strength, try to occupy some space and kind of body people away and catch the football. But not this guy. He's a refined route runner. Makes me wonder if he took some dance classes in his background with his footwork. here on first down. He sets to fire deep. And at the seven-yard line, the catch is made. And all the way in for a Charger touchdown. A big play there. His fourth touchdown on the year. And the Chargers are an extra point away from tying this thing up. Well, they went play action there and set it up nicely for him. I mean, he can flat fly, and they hit him downfield. And it doesn't take much to create that extra bit of space, the speed, and the action. All you want is just a moment where the guys covering take their attention somewhere else, and then he's by them. And once he's by them, there's no catching them. As they always like to say, 
If a receiver's even to a defensive back, that means he's leaving. Unless that DB is Charles Davis, right? In that case, he left me a long time ago. Come on now. <laughs> Trust me. So that drives six plays, 75 yards. And it ends with the Chargers getting into the end zone. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. Fielded about a yard deep. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. And Denver getting set to take the field. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. Now they try the right side here. And they take him down, losing yardage back at the 27. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. I'm no offensive mastermind, but of all the guys on the field to block, you might want to stop him. Look, I've got a very simple rule. Let's An go. unblocked defender is usually your best defender, and he ended up making the play there. And they'll bring him down after just a short pickup. Two yards gets him back to where they started, but now third and ten. A touchdown apiece here in this first quarter of play. Seven all is the score. EA Sports NFL Sunday returns following this. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Back alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. It's Bronco football to begin quarter number two. They've got it third and ten here to start things out. An extra defensive back on the field for the Chargers now on third down. Looking to throw. Throwing left side, it's complete. And he's taken down, but not before getting this across midfield and just shy of the 40. He got 29 yards that time. And that's one of his advantages of a passer, is it not? With his height, setting back there in the pocket, firing over the middle, he can really see everything clearly. It is, and I know that other quarterbacks get it done different ways, all right? You don't have to be his height to make a great play. But what he does is he takes away having to make those slide steps in the pocket to find angles to throw the ball through. He just throws right over the top of it because he can see everything. And sometimes that saves time and gets the ball to a receiver quicker. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Seeing that play and understanding just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays, makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? And what a really nice gain right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. Back to throw. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Osborne. And he's going to be stopped dead in his tracks at the 14. A good pick up there of 20 yards. As far as tight ends go, this guy's not a speed burner. He's much more of an inline blocking type of a tight end. But how about this last play? Made a nice catch and picked up a first down. That's what impresses me. And this is caught for a Bronco touchdown. And he's such a talented tight end, just creates nightmarish type matchups on the other side. He's so good that when we say tight end, we're almost damning him with faint praise, aren't we? Because he can do it all. He's as good as any receiver in the NFL. Well, that's the deal. He's a wide receiver, just in a bigger body. Bigger body, a matchup nightmare, and who's going to cover him? When I sit in the film session, I just look at the coach and say, really? Really? You're going to yell at me? You go cover him. Extra point attempt here still to come. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. The 
The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And from back there, a wise move. He'll just sit on this one, and it'll come out to the 25. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would, because if they were competent enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look close. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. And he's able to get this one up to the 45-yard line. A good pick up there of 20 yards. So there on that play, offensively, they were in the crossing route. Defense was in zone coverage. So as a former DB, how tough is it to defend that? It's really difficult because your natural inclination is to chase the receiver and maybe leave your zone. So you have to have discipline in order to talk to your other coverage guys and let them know that that receiver is crossing from your zone to the next zone. He's coming your way. Make sure you have him. And then when the ball is actually thrown, secure the tackle. When they're moving on crossing routes, if you miss a tackle, it usually results in a big play. And now the passing game here in the second quarter starting to heat up a little bit. Don't you feel the rhythm starting to happen, right? You see it now. The confidence is starting to rise. I think now as a play caller, because that has happened, you lean on it a little bit more. You don't go totally away from running the football, but you do say, guess what? We can throw it. We can throw it well with a whole lot of confidence. They'll look to throw here on first down. And he will avoid the contact as he slides to a stop. Call it a gain of three, and that'll make it a second down. They don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. Now a handoff here to his running back. And a big hit there as he runs into a brick wall right at the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that'll bring up a third down. Coming up at halftime, remember, we'll get you out to Larry Ridley in Orlando for highlights and analysis of this first half. That is, of course... Unless you decide to skip him. And for the record, we do not encourage that. Green 39. Green 39. They'll drop the throw. Throwing right, and that's complete. And he'll go down at the 28. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. They didn't get the first down, but I have to say I do like the call. I like what they were trying to do. Try and hit your receiver on the run and see if he can pick it up. Keep it on his feet. Get a little rack yardage. Yeah, but a nice job defensively to get to him and keep him short of the first. And this will split the uprights. It's right down the middle. And they'll cut the lead back down to four now at 14-10. So a good snap, good hold, and that one's right down the middle. Never in doubt. Just the way you used to hit them, Brandon. <laughs> Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. Here again comes the captain of this offense leading his crew back out there now. He's played a pretty clean first half, a touchdown, no interceptions. Frankly, that's what they expect out of it. They want to see the ball thrown and thrown well, and he's able to do that and put it in the end zone. They'd love to see more of that before this game finishes. But right now, he's got his team in a good spot. A good spot, maybe looking for touchdown pass number two here in the second quarter. A Bronco first down there, 12 yards on the play. to throw now on first down. 
And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. They call it a gain of 19, and it moves the chains. They'll look to throw now on first down. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. As the clock will stop with 33 seconds to go in the first half. Now back to throw. Now they go screen. It's complete. And he is going to feel that one. Knocked down hard. And now maybe they want some extra time to talk about this third and long play as we'll get a timeout. As they'll stop it with 25 seconds to go here in half number one. They'll look to throw. They'll rifle this one deep right side. This is caught inside the 15. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As the clock will stop with 18 seconds to go in the first half. throw forced out to his left and he's brought down another nice gain 13 yards that time at another first down man defensively that hurts they got him out of his rhythm they had him hemmed in but somehow he was able to tuck it away and get and that is caught touchdown denver You knew time was going to run out, so this had to be in the end zone, and somehow they were able to find a window and get it done. Very easy for us to talk about up here that, yes, all that had to happen, but when time's running down, sometimes your brain compresses a little bit, too. They show great poise, understanding of situation, making sure they get to the end zone in order to complete that pass and take a nice momentum into the locker room. It's good, and it's 21-10. So we are at halftime here on Halloween as we will send you eastward to Orlando and Larry Ridley. He's standing by with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Larry. Thanks, Brandon, and welcome to the EA Halftime Report. Let's take a look back at the first half. The Chargers haven't played football and trail because of it. The Broncos will want to come out after the half and really put the pressure on from the start. All right, let's get it going. Let's roll those first half highlights. Broncos taking the field for their opening drive. Jones Drews found on the quick pass, and he won't be brought down until he makes it to the eight-yard line. Broncos now later on the drive. The catch is made in double coverage, and it's going to be caught for the touchdown. Now first and ten, they strike first in the half. Broken coverage here on the deep pass, and he caps off the six-play drive with the score. Third down at the 29. Here the pass is completed into coverage. The Chargers tie it up at seven. Broncos now later on the drive. Here the pass would be completed into coverage. And he counts off the six play drive with the score. First and 10. That puts them up by a touchdown. Dotson's got the reception, and he'll end up at their own 45 yard line before being tackled. They go on to kick a field goal to end the drive. Final seconds in the first half. Pass coverage will break down here. He caps off the seventh play drive with a score. The lead now at 11. All right, Larry, these two teams back out there as we get set and ready for this second half. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And from back there, a wise move. He'll just sit on this one, and it'll come out to the 25. Out comes the Chargers as they'll go on offense now to start this third quarter. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. And I never want to make something more important than it actually is, right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But this is a do that? I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. 
a lot of them script to start the second half, too. And they're scripting something that they expect to get them into the end zone and back into this game. We'll, we'll see if that script is a good one for it. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. A gain of six there on first. If you're running out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? Toe tap. You got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up, and making sure it was a catch. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. They'll give him a yard on the play, and that'll make it third down. A good chance this is four down territory if they're unable to convert. But right now looking at a third and three. They'll look to throw. And the Broncos get there and take him down. And that'll be marked down as their first sack of the game. Well, they had six last week. And this offense did its homework, didn't it? Because they saw all that pressure, and they really worked hard to tamp it down and beat it back. And they did a great job in the first half. And now they've gotten their first sack here in the second half. Look out. They'll try to increase the pressure. So now a look at the Broncos as they head back out there for their first possession of the second half. They have the lead here. Well, we talk a lot about pregame speeches. What are halftime speeches like? For the most part, not nearly as emotional. They're a lot more clinical. Every now and then, though, they'll get after you if they think they need to light a fire. But in this case, let's go into the virtual locker room because here's what I think happened. They got in there and they said, listen, Let's take control right away. Yeah, Defense. We got the lead. Yeah. We got the, de we got the, we got the lead. Defense. Don't give up any points. Turn the ball back over to the offense and let them go down and score and give us more of a cushion in the game. Check so far. Defense shut them down. Let's see if the offense gets done. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. It'll only be a gain of a yard, and it sets up a third down and four now. I'd say they've got to find a way to get him going. He's such a big part of their offense. I wonder if they might throw it a little and come back to the run. Anything, because you're right. He's pretty much been completely neutralized. Out of the gun now on third down. Flushed out right. He may try and run for this. And he's got the first down yardage there as he takes it just across midfield. Five yards on the scramble, and that's enough to pick up the first. Now, this is a feeling I can relate to all too well. Deflation on third and short. Excellent coverage. Took away all the short routes, but the one person who wasn't accounted for, the quarterback. And he used his legs to hot foot it for a first down. 20! And they do finally get him, but he makes it all the way to the six. It's a big play there for the Broncos. 43 yards. They're trying to show that they can run the ball and protect this lead. Give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop him. Oh, he had six points in his hands there. Couldn't hang on. Second down. Let's give this defense some credit now. They let the guys get downfield, but when push came to shove, they stood their ground. Now they're likely to force a field goal attempt. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. Now the numbers have been good in the passing game and certainly a big reason why they have the lead. But now here, third quarter, maybe go to the run game a little more? Yeah, perhaps. I mean, after that incompletion, a little credit to the defense for shutting them down on that play. Maybe you try and run the football a little bit more in this spot. But they have to feel good about it. And this is caught for a Bronco touchdown. You have fun with this one, partner? I am. I mean, he's been fun to watch under center. We always talk about, you know, getting to the next level, right? When we see people get into the zone, this guy's in the master class right now. What a performance he's putting on, just carving him up. Four touchdown passes, carving him up is right. Seems like everything he throws is going to be a completion and going in the end zone.
The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And from back there, a wise move. He'll just sit on this one, and it'll come out to the 25. The Chargers offense now, they get set to head back on the field. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's not a team anymore. I just cut it. All right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But, so, hey, listen, there's got, got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we played three quarters. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Los Angeles. It's Charger football, but they trail here as we get going in quarter number four. The Chargers on third down. One for three thus far. And four. I got 83. I got 83. Right, here we go. Now, check. Green. 30, 30, 30. They'll set up to throw. Throw left side complete. That's Wolf. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. And just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. First down, he'll drop to throw. He's going to loft one deep left side here. This is caught inside the 15. There for L.A. 54 yards. And it's down in the second half. Looks like they just wanted to get it in the hands of their playmaker, and they did. I think you're exactly right. I don't think the coordinator is looking at his play sheet and trying to figure out which play will work well. He's trying to figure out how to get the ball to the playmaker that you just described. Looking down at that sheet, you find people plays, not necessarily X's and O's, and that's exactly what they did there. And he takes it in for a Charger touchdown. Their mobile, agile quarterback, his second touchdown of the game, 17th on the year. And the Chargers are able to close the gap just a bit. So they're down in the red zone. They opt to utilize his legs instead of the arm. It works out pretty well. I like what they were thinking there because in most situations now, a defense is accounting for all the other runners on the field and, of course, for pass plays. But the quarterback position, oftentimes it is unaccounted for. Offense coordinator felt it, dialed it right up. Inside the red zone, is this something teams should maybe, depending on the quarterback, do more often? Definitely. If you've got a quarterback who can actually move it with his legs, that's an extra option and an extra weapon for you. I think they should utilize it more often. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. And Denver getting set to take the field. And now last drive so successful with the ground game, ending in a touchdown. Do you stick with that formula? That would be the number one thing you would think of, but so many guys now would look at it and say, we've got them set up so well for play action. Now's the time to take a shot. Yeah. But, you know, there was a big-time coach in the state of Ohio who once said, if you throw the ball, if you put it in the air, blitz coming and down he goes. Well, that play was the very definition of fast, quick, and in a hurry. Suddenly, he was there. In a blink of an eye, that happened fast and a big sack. Here we go! Grand 98! Grand 98! They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll find some space up to about the 25. That'll get a little bit back, give him five on the run, and they'll be left with a third and 13. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. 
Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Patrick. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Give him 30 yards there. Big hook up there, forced to throw it on third down. The connection's going to keep the drive alive and also keep the clock moving. Yeah, and from a defensive perspective, didn't get a sack, didn't knock the ball free, didn't break up the pass. The clock keeps running on you. You're in a dire situation now. And he'll give it here to his running back. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. And give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. I have to chuckle to myself a little bit, Brandon, because right now I could be in that huddle with that offensive line. I know exactly what they're saying. If you call a pass play here, we're going to call a timeout. Run the football. <laughs> We've got control of this thing. Get in behind us and let's go. Their time to shine. Play clock winding down. Now a handoff here to his running back. They're able to push forward for about four down to the 37. Time for a break. We'll come back to wrap this one up after this. So it's Bronco football as we get you reset here. They've got a third down now as they look for one more first down to help salt this one away. They'll run it now out of the gun. Fighting his way down to about the 35-yard line. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ballgame. And with things looking pretty good on the scoreboard, they're going to keep the offense out there and go for it here on fourth. And nowhere to go. He's going to be stopped behind the line. The Broncos unable to convert here on fourth. And the Charger defense stands tall and they get the football back. So he needed the short yard as Charles, he elected to try to bounce it outside of the outer third, unsuccessful. Sometimes those plays are stacked up by the defense and there's nowhere to go, so you have to bounce it outside. And some backs just get impatient. They want nowhere to go here. He lost the football. Now the Chargers hustling, trying to get up and get set. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. Now the Chargers will use the second of their timeouts as they'll get it with just over 90 seconds to go in the ballgame. He'll look to throw. He's going to let it fly. That's caught inside the 20. A big play there for the Chargers on third down. 44 yards. Inside the red zone here. They'll look to throw. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he'd been able to haul that one in. Back to throw now on second and ten. Yeah, quick throw here. That's complete. That catch good for only a yard, and it'll be third down. They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. They'll look to throw here. And that is incomplete. I think that was a good job there defensively. They did allow him to drive all the way downfield, but once they got their backs to the goal line, they really turned up the pressure. Yeah, they let him get all the way down here. Now the field shrinks. They struggle to convert, and that last incompletion brings up fourth. And his kick here is good. And that'll make this an eight-point game. So we're back to a one-score game, and now you figure we'll likely see an onside kick. Yeah, they've only got the one timeout remaining, so I think they've got to take a chance of getting the ball back. So the field goal got him back within one score, and now the focus lies on this onside kick. And the Broncos are able to recover, and that should just about wrap this one up. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And... I know we've brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of an anecdotal type of a number, kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. 
I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. And they'll One, indeed take a knee. The Broncos on third down. They have been superb. Five for six to this point. This is third down and 12. The win for the Broncos, seemingly assured. They go down to a knee. And checking that NFL scoreboard there in the fourth quarter down in Arizona. And give that one to the Cardinals as they wind up winners. If they hold on, a victory there would be their third of the year. A road win in the National Football League. Charles, you never take that for granted, no matter who you're playing, no matter where you're playing. You take it and you run with it. <laughs> and you know you primed the pump all week in your own home facility. No one thinks we can do this. Only people who believe are right here in this room. And then you go on the road, band together, and get it done. So for the Broncos, they remain one of the hottest teams out there as the win moves them to 6-1. and one. And they'll get another road date next week as their opponents will be the New York Jets. Meanwhile, for the home team here, it's loss number three for them on the year. And they will try to get back in the swing of things next week on the road. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. So long, everybody.